Nextcloud on a Synology NAS. Let's do it. We're gonna start by not going to nextcloud.com. I'm gonna do this a little unofficial here. I'm gonna go to a site called linuxserver.io. And in linuxserver.io, I'm going to come up top where it says fleet and check out all these sweet Docker programs you can install. You can put probably most of these on a Synology NAS actually. So I'm gonna look for Nextcloud, sorry. I'm gonna look for Nextcloud. Uh, I might chew gum too, so this will be real bad. So we'll open up Nextcloud in a new tab. And then I'm also gonna do MariaDB. I'm gonna look for MariaDB here and open that in a new tab. All right, I'm gonna go through the three ways you can install Nextcloud on a Synology NAS, kind of just two. So we'll start with I'm too young to die, the easy mode. To the, um, let's go to the Nextcloud page that we opened up. And if you go, uh, if you come down here, it says Docker Hub, and then it's got a link. So we'll click that link. And when we scroll down, we'll find our code block, script block. I don't, I, I don't, you could tell, I don't really know what any of this stuff is. You'll see a section called Docker Compose, recommended. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna highlight all of this text and click copy. And now I'm gonna go back to my Synology NAS. So I'm gonna open up Container Manager, which if you don't have, you can go to the Package Center, type in Container Manager. Oh, you can really butcher it. And it'll still come up, click it, Install it. If you are not seeing Container Manager in the App Store, that means your model of Synology doesn't officially support it, but I would Google and see if other people have gotten it to work because chances are you could probably manually install the uh, program. It's probably a way of doing it and it's not too bad. So anyways, in Container Manager, um, the, oh, I'm also gonna need one other program and that is the text editor, which if you don't have, just go to the package center, type in text and you'll have it. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm gonna do in Container Manager is download these programs. So I'm gonna to go to Registry, and then I'm gonna search for Nextcloud, and I am going to download not the one with the blue check mark, which I don't know if they had to pay for that or what, but that does look sharp. We're gonna click on Linux Server Nextcloud, and download this item. Oh man, now the heater's going on. It's gonna be such a bad recording. And then for tag, I just want the latest version, and I'll click Apply. I'll go back to the registry and type in Maria db all one word <clears throat> and i should see one that says linux server maria db and it's got a bunch of stars 372 not as many as the check mark ones but it's still a lot and then latest i'll click apply all right now i'll click project <clears throat> and i'm gonna need to well let's just go ahead and create it so let's click create button project name i'm going to type in next cloud check it out our stuff downloaded path let's create a path this is where we're going to want to store all of our stuff. So I'm gonna to go to File Station, and then I have a Docker share. You should have one if you create a container manager. And then I'm gonna do new folder, and we'll call it Nextcloud. Okay, scoot this over because we'll have to come back. So now under path, I'm gonna set that path to Docker Nextcloud. Now for source, instead of upload Docker Compose YAML, we're going to create a Docker Compose YAML, and I'm just gonna paste in all that text that I got from the Linux server website. Um, ba -ba -ba. Where did I put it? This guy here. This Docker Compose, uh, Code Block, Drip Block, whatever it's called. But I do need to make a couple of changes here. So we're gonna have to do UID and Group ID, but we don't have to go in, we don't have to SSH to get this. There's actually a very simple way of doing this. We are going to go to Control Panel and we're gonna click on Task Scheduler. And then we will, I'm gonna delete this because that's, that's what I did to test to make sure that this works. We're gonna click Create, Schedule Task, user defined script and i'm going to name this task where it says task i'm going to type in get id and then under task settings there's a section called run command user defined script and here i'm just going to type in id space greater than sign i think that's what it's called space and then all it's going to do is get the user ids and put them into a text file so i just want to give it a location so i'm going to go back into file station i'm going to right click docker properties and copy that location. I'm gonna exit out of here, and then I'm gonna paste. And then I'm just gonna add forward slash id.txt. So this says, it's basically in command line going to run <clears throat> the command id, which will spat out some text, and then it's going to make it into a text file for us so we can see all the cool text that it spouts out. So I'll click okay. I will right click get id and click run. And yes, I am sure. Okay, okay, cool. Exit out of here, and if I go, if I click out of Docker and click back in, I can see, hey, Got the id.txt. So my user ID is 1035. Yours is probably something else. And the group ID for me is 100. Yours probably is 100 also. So you're looking for UID and GID. So I can come out of here, back in my Docker Compose YAML for the um, UID, it says PUID. Well, I don't know what the P stands for, but UID, I'll put that 1035. And for GID, I'll put 100. Time zone, you do not have to change this. Um, if you know your time zone, you can type it in. Now mine is America, far slash New York. I don't know them all. There's a Wikipedia page that lists all the properly written time zones, but I'll just stick with the one that I know, which is New York. Volumes, 
we want to change what is to the left of the colon. What is to the right of the colon, that is for Docker. To the left, though, is for us. So it's saying, I need a config folder. It says, hey, give me a config folder for your uh, next cloud. So I'm going to type in period forward slash config. And I'm going to do the same with data. I'm just going to delete this path to period forward slash data. Period is shorthand for this path, this Docker next cloud path. So I'm going to file station, Docker next cloud. I'm going to make those two folders, which is data and config. Um, so yeah, so if I right click config properties, this location here, I'm going to copy that real quick, is the same thing as writing period config. So period config is also the same thing as this because that is where this path takes me to. So I'm going to stick with the period.config. And then the only other change I need to make is ports. You can change this to pretty much whatever you want. There's a couple to avoid. Like I wouldn't put 8080, I wouldn't put 80, I wouldn't put 443, I wouldn't put 9000. Just pick a weird random number like um, 929111, 9222, whatever. All right, 9222. And this is going to be how we access Nextcloud. Um, and then the, the number to the right, you just leave that as is. That is for Nextcloud Docker, and you don't need to do it. And we'll hit Next. We are not going to set up a web station. Start the project once it is created. And you have successfully created Nextcloud on your Synology NAS. You've successfully put on a program that can basically just do all the same stuff that your Synology NAS can do. But let's check it out. So to access it, you're just going to go to the IP address of your Synology NAS, colon 9222, or whatever number you put for that first port number. So if I double click here and click YAML configurations, this is where we're going. If you don't know the IP address of your Synology NAS, on the upper right hand, you can just click on widgets, and then system health. Hopefully yours isn't critical like mine. Sorry, I'm, I'm messing around with the NAS a little bit. But under LAN 1, you should get a an IP address. Mine is 192.168.8670. Yours is probably 192.168.1. something. It could be totally different, but that should be it. So to access Nextcloud, I'm going to type in this number, colon 9222. Now here we are. So unlike some of my other videos, this one actually requires HTTPS. So make sure for this particular app, you're typing in HTTPS colon slash slash your IP address, the IP address of your Synology NAS colon 9222. And check it out. We have arrived, and we know that because it's letting us go ahead. Yes, this is a security risk, but I made the security risk, so I'll deal with it. Accept the risk and continue, and that's all you got to do. And you can install Nextcloud, and you can just make up a uh, username. I use my legal name, and then I type in my legal password that I have to use in all my legal documents. And then the reason, so I, I will do the more advanced version, which is use a different database, but we're going to use SQLite. So if I click storage and database, it gives you a couple different choices. The next one I'm going to do is MariaDB, but I'm going to stick with SQLite for right now. And I'm going to hit install. You can read all of this. But, uh, let's hit install. In my experience, using Nextcloud, which is not too much, for basic stuff like contacts, calendars, photos, and I, I've only used this just for me. I don't have a lot of users using this stuff. I haven't had any issues with SQLite. I'm not a system administrator. I'm not a server administrator. I'm not a Docker administrator. I don't know if any of those are real jobs or not, because I don't really work in tech. But as a hobbyist, this has worked fine for me. And check it out, it installed. So you can, if you want to install the recommended apps, you can. I, I would, it's kind of, uh, this is kind of the big chunk of Nextcloud here for you. So probably get those. I'm going to hit click skip though, because that'll take a while if I install those. But I'm in. Got this video with high production quality. It's actually pretty good. Pretty good video, nice design. I like the clouds. You can set weather for your location and you're in. So this is the simple version. If you want to mess around with Nextcloud, I think this is the way to do it. This is the easiest way. This is the om too young to die version of Nextcloud. But there is a more difficult way. So there is, if you, if you want to get a more advanced database, because let's say you think you like it, maybe you're going to have a lot of users on here, you're going to be doing a lot with it, and you don't want to have to worry about whether SQLite is going to work for you or not. I get it. I have no idea the capabilities of these databases, but MariaDB, I believe, is the recommended way to go. So let's install this with MariaDB. I will close. Now I'm going to close out of here and go back to my Synology NAS. Let's get out of my critically endangered, critically endangered Synology NAS widgets. Okay, I'm going to close out and I'm going to delete everything that I did. So I'm going to go back into Container Manager, Project, I'm going to right click and click Stop, Close. I'm going to do this fresh as though I have not done any of the previous steps, except for Get ID. You're going to have to go back and look at the Get ID because I'm not doing that again. I'll click Delete on this project. I'm going to go to Container. I'm going to delete this container. Um, Okay, it's gone, gone. Image, I'll... I'm going to leave those because guess what? You should already download those. If not, it's fine. It doesn't matter. I'm going to delete this next cloud folder, which if you go into, by the way, check it out. Under config, it's got all these files that weren't there before and data. It has a bunch of files that were there too. So 
it did things. I'm gonna right click and click delete. This is gonna take longer than I expected. Oh, that's a lot of files. 14,000 files, that's so many. All right, Whew. round two, let's start over. Click on container manager, project, and create a new project. I'm gonna call this one next cloud as well. For a path, let's make a path. Well, let me see if I can click, oh, I did it. Without even being able to see it, I did it. In my Docker share, I'm gonna make a new folder called nextcloud, just like I did before. Come back to container manager. I'll set that as my path. So path, Docker, nextcloud. Cool, so it's gonna store all my nextcloud files in there. Under source, let's create a Docker compose file and let's use the same, we're gonna use all the same stuff that we got before from uh, the fleet.linuxserver.io page. So I'm gonna copy this, paste it in here, and I'm just gonna use all the same numbers as before. So for PID, mine was 1035. Group ID was 100, time zone, America, New York. You really don't have to change that if you don't want to though. Config, I will type in period forward slash config. I'll do the same with data. I'll just add a period there. I'll go ahead and make these two folders right now before I forget. Um, oh God, should have really scooted this over before. I'll scoot you over there so I can see. Okay, so I'll click on my next cloud folder and I'll create a folder called data and I will create a folder called config container manager. And I'm gonna change that port, that first port. I'll type in 9222 two, two, like I did before. Ah, you know, what? I'll change it. For this one, I'll do 9333. How about that? Okay, but now we also want a database. This is the cool thing about Docker Compose is I can add a database in here. So under services, we see Nextcloud. So it's gonna launch the Nextcloud server, but I also want a database. So I'm gonna go to my fleet.linux.io link that I opened up from MariaDB. So Docker Hub, let's click this link from MariaDB. And then I'll scroll down to the Docker Compose section. Here we go, usage, Docker Compose, recommended. Copy, I don't need to copy all of this. I'm gonna come down to where it says services. And what's under here is what I need. So just this MariaDB all the way down to where it says restart unless stopped. Copy that, go back to my container manager, my Synology NAS. I'm gonna hit return, backspace, and I will hit paste. And check it out. If things don't line up, you're gonna get an error. So if you didn't hit backspace, you might've done that. And you can see it's gonna say, all mapping items must start at the same column. So make sure this looks all fancy too. So MariaDB should line up with where it says next cloud up here because that is the service. And now we gotta make a MariaDB changes. This has hurt me plenty mode, so this gets a little bit more complicated. Um, under container name, you can change the container name and I actually do wanna do that. I'm gonna type in nextcloud fart slash MariaDB. So that way in my list, I'll know that this is the database I specifically set up for nextcloud. Um, bop, bop, bop. And this is just a container name that you don't use this anywhere else. I think this is just for what we're looking at in container manager. Under environment, PID 1035, I'll just use the same PID and GID as above. Time zone is gonna be the same thing. I'll type in America forward slash new underscore York, and then boom, boom, boom. We got a couple things here. So where it says MySQL root power, play the password, I'm gonna make that a password. I'll make it secure, because I feel like that's the right thing to do. That looks pretty secure to me. The username, <clears throat> I'm just gonna type in nextcloud. Let's Keep it simple, next cloud. So that is the database name. The MySQL username is going to be next cloud. And then MySQL password is going to be something secure. Okay, that looks pretty secure to me. And where it says remote, I'm actually going to go all the way to the left and I'm going to just write in a pound sign or hashtag. And that's gonna uncomment that. You see where it says optional? That means I don't, I don't necessarily need it. So if you're wondering what all this stuff is, I am not the one to ask, I really don't know. So let's go down to volumes. <clears throat> config, we're gonna do the same thing as before. I want this to be in a folder called config. So I'll do period four slash config. I already have a folder called config though. And I actually want this to be a little bit more descriptive. So I'm gonna type in db forward slash config, which is short for database config. And I'll go ahead and make that folder right now. So I'll go back into file, man file station. I'm in my next cloud folder and I'll create a folder called db hyphen Config, that's what I call it, right? Yeah, DB config, okay. Perfect, and then port, I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna do you a favor, cause you might do a MariaDB um, tutorial in the future that uses, that wants to use this port. So I'm gonna type, instead of 3306, I'm gonna type in three, mm, three, mm, I'm gonna type in something more random than that. I'm gonna type in, what I type in for Nextcloud? 9333, I'm gonna type in 9444. And we should be good. This is, this is I know, this is getting a little complicated. Next. And then for set up a web portal, I'm gonna click next because I'm not gonna set up a web portal. I'm gonna leave that unchecked, click next. And then start the project once it is created. It's gonna pull, this should go by fast because it already has all that stuff downloaded and exit code zero. <clears throat> okay, this is the point where you will see that I'm not very confident in my ability to do this. So we'll, we'll see what happens. 
actually going to go to project, double click Nextcloud, YAML configuration. So I'm gonna keep this open because I'm gonna have to refer back to this MariaDB stuff in a moment. Now let's go back. I'm gonna do the same thing as I did before. So IP address of my Synology NAS, colon 9333, because that is the port number that I put in for Nextcloud in that Docker Compose YAML. All right, so that's a good sign. I'll click advanced, accept the risk and continue. Okay, so I do the same thing as before. I'm gonna use my legal name, what's on my passport, and then under password, very secure password that none of, you, none of you will be able to guess. I mean, I guess you can guess, but you won't get it correct. All right, so configure the database. We're now gonna click on the middle option, which says MySQL slash MariaDB. Click database user, um, type in Nextcloud. And I know that it's Nextcloud because if I go back here, under the MariaDB section, I have an environmental variable called MySQL user, and that is Nextcloud. All right, what's your next question? Your next question is database, database password. So I'll go back and here is MySQL password. That's what I'm looking for. I'm gonna copy that. It is not asking for the root password. It is asking for the MySQL password. So just copy that. Oh my God, I can't believe I just showed that to you. And then database name is also Nextcloud. That's what I put here, right? Yeah, my SQL database is just Nextcloud. And there we go. And then under database host, you can say, it says, please specify the port number along with the host name. I'm not gonna use localhost because I have not had luck doing that. I'm gonna type in the IP address of my Synology NAS, colon, and then the port number for MariaDB, which I put as, I don't remember, even though it was really easy, 9444. This is the part where I'm a little uncertain if this will work, but let's find out. Let's click install. Taking a little bit of time, that's a good sign. That is a good sign. I think it's installing. I think it's making a database and everything. You're gonna feel so proud of yourself if you did this on Hurt Me Plunge. All right, and it worked. So now we have gotten Nextcloud up with MariaDB on a Synology NAS. Um, and you spent all that time, even though you'll probably just go back to using the Synology stuff. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You might use the Nextcloud stuff, I don't know. But there you go. And then you can install the recommended apps if you so choose. I'm gonna click skip because that will take too long. Check it out. And if I go back to my NAS, I'm sorry, I'm still chewing gum. Gotta sound annoying. It's either that or the coughing. I'll click on container and I can see I got my two containers up, my MariaDB one and my Nextcloud one. So there we go, it all works. If you ever wanna make changes to this, you can. Um, you know where your YAML configurations are. If you ever wanna update those or add different environmental variables, if you find something on the internet that you wanna play around with, this makes it pretty easy to do. And I did say that there was a ultra violence mode, not quite nightmare, and that would be using the official Nextcloud container, which I'm not gonna do because it requires using a reverse proxy. And even with that, it can be pretty difficult to put up. It's not too difficult to follow the instructions if you know what you're doing, but in my experience, it's finicky. I think a lot of other people experience that as well. If you're wondering where that is though, we can go up to, on the official Nextcloud site, which is just nextcloud.com. I'll go to ba -ba -ba, solutions, documentation. Scroll down to, oh, I don't know. This is where I wanna be. No, I wanna go to ne get Nextcloud, get Nextcloud. Next cloud server, and then hmm, all-in-one Docker image. Set up AIO. Oh boy, I will leave it up to you if you wanna do this. They do have a YAML file that is meant for Portainer. So I guess you could install Portainer, try it that way. Good luck. Um, yeah, so how does it work? How to run it? So they've got their Docker Compose file here. If you wanna check it out and make that attempt. This does require you using Docker volumes. So if you make a mistake and wanna get rid of that Docker volume, you're gonna to have to SSH in to do that. I don't know of a way of doing that without SSH. I guess you could use the, you could run that script again. You could do the scripting method and do it that way, I guess. But this is the ultra violence mode. If you wanna take a stab at it, it's here. There are some specific directions for a Synology NAS. I would think about whether it's worth it or not. You'd probably be better off running this in a virtual machine on a Synology NAS, which is not that bad to do. Maybe I'll do a tutorial on that in the future because I do want to do a couple, I do want to do a couple of tutorials that involve using a virtual machine. So machine, sorry, I'm mispronouncing because I'm chewing gum, so I don't cough a bunch. Better if I was just coughing. But there you go. You got Nextcloud on here. You either did it the simple way with SQLite or you did it the hurt me plenty mode with MariaDB and you don't have to worry about... Uh, not being in the preferred method of databasing, I guess. But you also got to launch your first database, which you should take pride in because in my experience, database stuff is where it gets a little bit more complicated in the Docker world. For If you're installing and you're a hobbyist, you don't have a background with this stuff, some of the database stuff can get a little complicated. So being able to launch it and use it, I think it's, it's a huge heads up. It'll help you a lot. And there's a lot of programs that use it, especially MariaDB, use it, especially Maria 